Uh, and my name is Tommy Strickland. I'm with the Salesforce IQ team. So another offering um, that recently joined the Salesforce family. Um, I was actually with Relate IQ, the prior company before the acquisition. Um, it's pretty fun to see another company from Palo Alto where uh, I think it was our second office. The first one was actually next to like a veterinarian hospital. It was like fit five people, 10 people. Um, but as we continue to grow and scale, uh, we actually moved uh, what we thought was up and up into a basement in Palo Alto, no windows, uh, had very much of that, that sort of like Vegas effect where you'd come up and put on your sunglasses and you'd be like, oh wait, the sun's been down for six hours already. So working those long hours. And what we found is that as a startup ourselves, um, we had a process that was ever changing. Um, while one day we thought our sales reps should sell into verticals, the next day we decided that that was the worst idea ever and we needed to change back very, very quickly. So we needed a platform that was really, really easy to customize. Um, when I speak to customization, I'm not saying that you had to have an engineer, an admin, someone actually on site to hard code any of these changes. It's very, very easy to do yourself. So um, as a sales rep with no background in technology whatsoever, I um, was actually in private wealth prior, uh, selling storage containers prior to that. So. Uh, not the most glamorous uh, of, of backgrounds, but um, I was actually able to make these changes to hook up some of these integrations um, just by playing around for a couple of minutes. So my goal today is to, to really show you uh, both the platform that we have for Salesforce IQ, which is a standalone CRM from Sales Cloud. Um, we see a lot of traction in small businesses, startups that need that ability to move very, very quickly. Um, from growing, when I started, we were two sales reps to six sales reps in the following months to now 20 sales reps where we're at now, where we need those integrations with um, payment processing. We need um, you know, quote to cash tools. Uh, we have robust um, Pardot implementations, you know, two and a half, three years down the line, where now we're integrating with Sales Cloud fully for that. So I hope to walk you through that story a little bit, show you some of the CRM platform, and then dive into sort of the roadmap of how we've seen a lot of customers actually continue to grow throughout Salesforce IQ CRM, but then know when it's correct to transition to Sales Cloud. Um, when you do transition to Sales Cloud, um, through the demo that we just saw, there's a lot of great features that we're hoping to augment as well through the Salesforce IQ platform. So sort of how the company was built, um, the idea was all around making an automatic and intelligent and intuitive platform um, where all of those activities your reps aren't spending time actually logging those activities. They're just going into the platform right away. Um, employee turnover. Uh, CEO, we have to leverage the relationship that a COO has with your, you know, your brand new sales rep. We can see all of those connections throughout the platform. Um, and again, that's what we hope to bring to, to Sales Cloud as well as you continue to progress with your company. So uh, with that, I'm going to jump actually into the platform. The biggest question that we get from a lot of um, customers is actually what happens when we connect our account? Um, I mentioned that there's a lot of automatic data capture that happens. Um, we're automatically logging those activities. Once you sign in with your Google or Microsoft Exchange account, um, all that it's doing is actually taking all of those contacts and past communications and then making them evident to yourself. So it goes into your own private address book, your own private um, record keeping uh, portion of the application. Now, by default, that happens. If you so choose for new reps, new interns, anything like that, you can actually opt into sharing all of that content automatically. So right away, you'll see that when you log in, we actually have some suggested tasks here. These aren't tasks that I've created manually. It's actually Salesforce IQ going through and actually reading the emails, seeing the cadence, and how fast I respond to people, if they've actually asked me a question. And I can see that Tony Piazza here said, how about tomorrow afternoon? Now, Salesforce IQ can not only see that email, but it can actually see the calendar as well and see that I don't have a calendar event set with that email address, with that point of contact. It's going to then surface that in the suggested task, so I don't drop the ball with that individual. Um, it's constantly going through machine learning, so you can actually hit the X. You can sort of say, hey, that person's not as important. Um, or you can go ahead and create a task and sort of give the platform a pat on the back saying, yes, that's the type of, uh, of reminders that I'd like to see. Um, You'll see a couple of other tasks below here for today. So very um, you know, uh, capable to actually create your own um, manual tasks. But one thing I'll jump into real quick is the meetings tab here. So I mentioned it has access to your calendar. So we can actually see our whole day scheduled out. Um, if I'm going to be running late to a meeting with coffee uh, because this one's going too long, I can actually email those attendees directly from the platform without having to jump back and forth. Again, it's using my own email server. It's not going to get blocked by any spam filters or anything like that. 
Um, as well as if I go into my uh, inbox, I'll see that in my sent folder. So there's no risk in double communicating there. Um, I'd mentioned before that uh, we really had to have the flexibility to um, change on the fly our sales processes. So you'll see up top here where we have leads, opportunities, and customers. These are lists in Salesforce IQ. It's where we organize all of our data. And it should look pretty familiar to a lot of people that have been using Google Docs or Excel before. Um, it has all of your opportunities listed out on the left, um, statuses, who owns those accounts. But again, the thing that sets us apart is that automatic data capture. So I can quickly sort by one of our intelligence fields, like this inactive days here. I can say, I have five minutes right now. Who's the person that I've been dropping the ball with the most? These are my next five phone calls. I know it's been two weeks since I've talked to anyone at Rowdy or Checks R Us or 12 days since Lolo Advisors. So I can then go ahead and, and click into each of these and not only make it a cold call, but actually check out what we call our stream of communication. So just by clicking on the, the opportunity there, I can actually see that before I made this call, I actually have a call with them later today at 2 p.m. So it would have been pretty bad if I would have cold called them and said, hey, it's been two weeks since we've talked, looking to get some time on the calendar. And they're like, wait, what are you talking about? We have a meeting at 2 o'clock today. So again, not only your own calendar, your own email communications, but anyone else on the team as well. Um, similar to what we saw before, you can also interact with other colleagues through um, at mentioning, chattering. Uh, again, it's all in one centralized location for everyone to actually uh, benefit from that information instead of being siloed uh, in every which space. Um, we do have a reports section as well. Um, it's very out of the box. Um, that's the one key feature that we wanted to continue to, to push across here. Um, it's not for uh, if you have a ton of time to invest in actually creating your own dashboards and diving into the metrics. Um, we want to show you the activity of what the sales reps are doing over any custom time frame, um, what you're closing, but it's basically in these 12 predefined reports here. So very quick, very easy numbers that are all real time. Um, there's no ability to customize this. Again, it's all out of the box, so it should be pretty, um, you know, very simple to just uh, put in action, connect your email, and then you're up and running out of the gates. One last feature on the Salesforce IQ CRM piece is I'm actually going to jump into my inbox here. It's pretty small. Sorry about that. Let me zoom some. But we realize that a lot of times reps, CEOs, everyone, they spend a lot of time in their inbox as well as their CRM. So we wanted to surface that data directly from your inbox. So if I have Chad here who just sent me an email, I'm interested in learning more. I can actually see all of that CRM data from that Excel sheet right in the right-hand column here. I can easily edit any of those fields, as well as add him to, um, you know, potentially if he was asking about fundraising, I could create a fundraising list and add him to the fundraisers list. I could add him to the opportunities list. I could add him to the customers list. Whatever your specific workflow for that contact is to, to keep them in line. Now, a lot of customers uh, are pretty excited about this, and we do see a lot of customers actually transitioning to sales cloud when they get more robust processes in place, trying to get more of those integrations in place as well. And so what we've done is we've actually enabled these features for our sales cloud users as well. So I can take that same email from Chad, and you'll notice now that there's a little cloud here with a plus. I actually don't have a record for Chad in my Salesforce instance. So I can go ahead and create that record, be it a lead, a contact, an opportunity, directly from my inbox without having to jump into the sales cloud platform. Um, again, trying to up your productivity, make it as fast as possible to actually get that information into your CRM, as well as surface that data. I'll open one more email from Lauren here. Um, she says, attached to the executed contract, looking forward to working with you. I can actually see those records directly in Sales Cloud without leaving the inbox again. I can see that we're in a prospecting stage for $5,000. Any of your pertinent information that you want to display here, you can have available. Now, we didn't stop with just leveraging the CRM data. We actually have a couple of productivity tools here on the left as well. So we can attach a read receipt so you can know when your customers are actually opening those emails and you're top of mind. Um, we can actually create a task if no replies. So all the time I would send out emails and then they'd be gone. They'd be in my sent folder and I never look at them again. Now if this person doesn't follow up with me in the next, um, in the next week, I can actually automatically create a task for myself to re-engage with them again. Moving along here, uh, again, those, uh, that Vegas effect, as I alluded to earlier, if it's 2 in the morning, you don't want your email to get buried in their inbox, you can actually schedule to send those emails later. Um, and then I'm terribly slow at typing, so we have what's called shortcuts. It's templating. You can actually in include those, so you can have a fully templated email um, at one click. 
Now the last piece here, um, we actually joked when we were meeting for this, uh, this presentation before, um, is insert availability. Um, I use this constantly throughout my day. But what it does is it actually leverages um, your calendar and you can actually take a look in and propose times to meet. And once I insert those. Now the, the benefit here is that if one of these times get filled up before the customer actually clicks on the time and, and selects uh, when we should meet, it's actually a dynamic image. So that time will get removed from the email. So you don't have a customer clicking on a time, getting the 404 page, having to navigate to some third party app. Once they click on a time, if it's still available, you both get a calendar invite and the meeting scheduled. So you avoid the six, seven emails back and forth. How about two, how about 10? Maybe next week, I'm on a plane now. Um, again, trying to, to add to uh, reps productivity um, on the go or uh, in your inbox. Now, we not only um, had this available within um, our Gmail uh, Chrome extension, but we also have it in our inbox app. So this is Salesforce IQ inbox. Um, again, I can have this connected to my Salesforce IQ CRM instance or we've actually made it available to our sales cloud customers as well. So when you're directly within your inbox, I can again click on Lauren Robinson here and now in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a little cloud. I can actually, it's gonna try and walk me through the demo, but uh, click on the cloud. I can see all of those CRM records directly from my mobile application. Again, not having to move back and forth. I'm having all of my information uh, at my fingertips. Um, a lot of customers, ask, you know, when's the right time to transition to Sales Cloud? And what we found is that, just like we said before, um, the key piece here is talking with your account um, executive. They've seen the transition, as I go through my iTunes, um, to a lot, of different, uh, or a lot of different companies, to a lot of different versions of Sales Cloud from a lot of different versions of Salesforce IQ. Um, we mentioned earlier that we'll have a desk representative and possibly a Pardot representative come through. We do have integration capabilities with those. So um, you can connect to your desk account, your Pardot account, um, any of those third-party applications. But again, when it becomes much more robust, when you have a lot of these features and you really need to build out that process, that's when we start the conversation. And again, where we've seen the most success with that is you're not having to rip and replace a third-party system and explore all sorts of other options, but it's now the story where we can start with Salesforce IQ, where it's out of the box, completely ready to use, and then decide when's the correct time to transition to sales, uh, sales cloud and not have a rip and replace moment where we can actually help you through that transition in that process. So um, just a brief demo here, but definitely wanted to leave a couple of minutes at the end if anyone has any questions. Go ahead. Uh, is this sold with the sales? How, how, are, how are they connected? Great question. So our Salesforce IQ CRM, uh, this web, page that you're looking at right here is a standalone CRM. So it's not integrated with Sales Cloud. It's a completely separate offering. Now the mobile application, as well as the Gmail Chrome extension, and we do have an Exchange um, web-based extension, those can actually be added on to your Sales Cloud license and you can access all of your Sales Cloud information. So this is standalone? Correct. Which means that it is not integrated with the Salesforce CRM? Correct. So great question. It's usually a transition process. So we mentioned the robust um, you know, uh, uh, partnerships that Salesforce has and all the different admins out there. If you have someone on your company that's completely ready and, and has the knowledge and can set up that Salesforce instance, oftentimes that's the better path. If you have um, you know, rep productivity as your focus and they're used to uh, spreadsheets and Google Docs and they're not ready to adopt uh, to a full-blown CRM platform, you know, with all the robust dashboarding and spending time to set some of those up. Um, this is all out of the box, and we see a lot of companies starting with this process um, as an ease into their CRM, where you can continue to grow with this platform, or we can discuss when's the correct transition into Sales Cloud. So how difficult is the transition from this to a, the, the, you know, what we normally know as a CRM? Yep, so we have a post-sales team that helps with that entire process. Um, so no data we lost? Correct. So the beauty is it's all automatically logged in Salesforce IQ. A lot of times we'll actually see customers keeping possibly one license of this so that they can quickly access any of that historical data 
And again, we transition you through the process. So it's not like a go live date that you'll see when you move from a lot of third party platforms, where it's like, by this date, don't put any more information in. We're gonna try and you know, put it all in at two in the morning so that when your reps come in the next day, it's all there. Um, there's not gonna be any issues with that. Um, we can have them both run side by side and we can help transition that data. And that's a great point with robust amount of apps that you have to connect, uh, things like that. Um, oftentimes we see customers choosing sales cloud in that instance. If you have, like I joked before, we used a long time ago, I think Zora for our payment processing. And I was able to use a third party platform called Zapier to actually hook those up as a sales rep. So the very simple processes that you can do, um, oftentimes Salesforce IQ is, is a great fit for that. Um, but again, it's engaging with your account executive, actually mapping out those processes, as well as the roadmap, right? Because we don't want to get you set up on Salesforce IQ just to hear that in two months you're going to have you know, 15 other third-party apps that you need to integrate with your platform, and then it's all for naught. So uh, again, um, engaging professionals like the solutions architects that we have available um, is a great help. Yep, so our highest tier business package, um, which I didn't highlight here, has open API endpoints. So the customer has to choose that. Correct. So you, that you can access a lot of the, um, the, a lot of the endpoints exposed data that you've manually put in. The one piece that we do um, prevent is the automatically captured emails. Um, there's a lot of permissioning that goes into that. Sure. And so um, any values like revenue fields, points of contact, accounts, anything like that are fully accessible via the API. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yes. Also, uh, documentation that open API is available publicly. It is API dot related or API dot Salesforce IQ dot com. So it'll redirect that related. Uh, yes, it still will. <laughs> Um, and then rather than, I was checking out the Salesforce for Startups page, um, putting it out there, uh, list prices are 25 for the starter edition, uh, 65 for the growth edition, uh, which does include the Zapier integration, sort of easy out of the box with Desk and Pardot. Um, and then the business tier is 125 per user per month um, with the open API, more robust reporting. Uh, again, all annual contracts, so same as Salesforce.